Hey, me and Chris are going for it after the experience we've just had. Good evening, everybody. We are with Chris UK. Chris, every time we try to link up, there's a problem, isn't there? It's usually you, but it was me today. All right. Well, that's good. It's your turn. Yeah, we were just saying that we felt that they were messing around with everything. Yeah, I think they definitely are because emails going everywhere, not arriving with a lot of stuff, especially between flat earthers. Uh, very strange. I, I couldn't even get on the, my hangout on the phone. It just wouldn't let me on. And it said he had a, a problem. And then suddenly, boom, it was there, thank goodness. But yeah, we just had the. And I also sent Chris an email, and my phone doesn't show I sent an email at all, which I find really bizarre. Well, it's going to get worse. Right. Anyway, we're here today to listen to a bit of Chris. He's been, Hello, lots of, he's been doing lots of experiments and things, haven't you? Uh, I've had quite a few videos up uh, lately, all about the same thing, but rotation and movement, basically killing the globe model, stone dead. Uh, I've, it's getting quite interesting because I've got quite a few trying to debunk it. About three videos have come up, people trying to debunk what I've been saying. Uh, they're not even debunking it. It's really funny because I can use their footage against them. I've done one already and I've got another two to go. Uh, so it's really good fun at the moment, chatting to physicists. I think it's mostly physics teachers. Uh, they're the most annoying ones because they just rabbit it on about the stuff they rabbit on about all day. They uh, just rub it on about a theory we know doesn't exist. Yeah, but you, I've got I've had quite a few in-depth physics people. Obviously, it's the profession, and they're the ones that get the points I'm on about straight away, and then press on about acceleration and things. So I've got I've ch chatted to about seventy physics professionals, I think, and about half of them get the that acceleration is happening, and the other half just totally deny it. I don't I don't see how people don't get this. I mean, when you when you think. Yeah, but, but there's enough information now for enough people to wake up. If we were on something spinning like that, like you say, the inertia and everything, I'd be going like, dawn's coming, here we go. It's, just been ridic it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but if you work out just the rotation by itself, there's not actually that much force involved as it rotates. So work it out. And just the rotation, you don't go flying off. There's not enough force. So they're right about that, but it's just a static rotation. But as soon as it moves, as you can see in the basic physics I've put on the videos, it just falls apart. And they just try it, you know. Hey, Chris, how can you say that when, okay, supposing at the equator you're doing zero, but we're not. We're spinning at a space at uh, probably five, 600 miles an hour. So how can that be not noticeable? Well, because well, say you're spinning at a 1,000 mile an hour at the equator, which is a bigger, bigger place. But you can work out because of the radius what the, the the force would be outwards. So there's a formula to work that out, and it's a very small amount. So you, so it does affect a mass because I'm working on a separate experiment to do with this. So I've worked all these different points out. So it, it does affect a mass, but by a very small amount. So say uh, ten kilograms at the equator will be pulled out by thirty four grams. So that's all force that rotation gives that 10 kilograms. So, and then if you put that 10 kilograms at the pole, it'll add, you know, it'll, be it'll be 10 kilograms plus 36 grams. That's supposedly, that's the way, the way the maths works. But the maths does work, that a, a mass does change. But I've got an experiment coming up, hopefully shortly or in a month or so, I'll have it ready to put out the idea and all the maths. Uh, I'm hoping to get some globe heads on board to check the maths and uh, see if this experiment is something they would be willing to take part in or agree with. So it's exciting times. It, I have spoke about it online, Realm Media, uh, briefly. There's a small bit about it there, and they're all excited about it. So I'm a physicist to chat to at the conference. He was mega excited about it. So it's just, there's so many ideas flying around my head. I'm dealing with the videos I put on now and debunks and chatting to people on forums and on the debunks uh, YouTube channels and chatting to the physicist guys or whatever, whoever on them 
on their channels. So I'm going into the lines, dens, and chatting to the to the groups, you know, and you get called an idiot and everything. But there are intelligent people there who will have a conversation. Uh, so I'm just going in there, hell for leather, putting the facts down, and just arguing in the corner. Um, they're not winning. No. As soon as they turn around and start saying, "Well, you spelled that wrong," or put a full stop in the wrong place, you know they've lost, and that's happening a lot. So, you know, spelling's not brilliant by any means, but They'll argue for you know, an hour, two hours, and as soon as they're losing the point, they'll go, well, you spelled that wrong, so you're an idiot. So it's just, it's, it's, it's daft. It's, it's a real weird thing to work out. Yeah, the logic, they'll, they'll agree with one thing one minute, and then they'll disagree with it the next. <coughs> it's strange things, but we're getting there. This is... a. Uh, blowing up in the face because they get half the physicists agreeing with the points I'm making and half not, the ones that have looked at it. So they'll be arguing between themselves pretty shortly about what's right. So they'll get there eventually, well, some of them will. So, we'll so for, for the channel, or anybody that hasn't seen your videos, which ones have you been doing lately then? Uh, I've, ju I've just put one on my channel called Relative Motion. Uh, it was about a week a week ago, which just deals with relative motion, which is their biggest argument. You know, everything's relative. So I deal slightly with that. I've got another one that I've just started to put together that totally blows them all out of the water, the relative motion, the lot. Uh, it starts with a rotating plate moving along the path and the physics involved with the points on that. And then I move it onto a train and a box in a train then I move the train into space and I say, well, when does this physics stop working? And then I take the, take the train away and just have the rotation in space moving. I say, well, is it still the same physics or has it disappeared? And it disappears because they, they say it's relative motion, but it's nonsense. They can't have it all. It works all the way up until it goes into space and then something magic happens. It doesn't, the physics disappears. So that's the video I'm doing. It'll agree all the way up until it gets into space. And then all of a sudden, that physics they've agreed to all the way from the ground up doesn't work. Something happened. And, and what happened is they said it was relative movement. <coughs> and it's just nonsense. So I don't know if you'll get that. Some of the chaps in the, that are watching it will. Do you, to, <coughs> do you want to explain it a little bit then, as, you, as you're talking about it? Uh, yeah, I've got a plate here to, to show, but basically, I'll get a small rotation moving and get them to agree that a point on that rotation, if it's moving, is accelerating and decelerating. So that's a simple, small rotation moving along a track at a constant speed. So they can't deny that that's the physics, it's provable, demonstrable, everything. So then I'll move that onto a train. So I'll say the rotation is now moving at the same speed as before, same rotation, but has anything changed? Are we still accelerating and decelerating? Well, it's obvious that they've agreed already, so then they can't disagree. Then I'll put it in a box and say, has it changed now? Or is it the same acceleration and deceleration? And they can't disagree because they've agreed all the way down the line. Then I'll say, I'm gonna put the train and the box in space, moving along at the same velocity and revolving at the same velocity. Is it still accelerating and decelerating? And they'll have to think about that one because it's in space. And they'll probably they'll have to agree because they can't change the physics. So then I'll, then I'll say the train and the box are disappeared and we just have a rotation moving the same and moving through space the same. Does anything change? It doesn't. <coughs> It changes in the maths because they use relative motion. They say there's no motion of the rotation because there's no reference point. But it worked all the way up until it got to space. And as soon as it got to space, the maths said it didn't work. But Or you've got the track from the very bit, small rotation on the track up to space. <coughs> all works until it hits space, which is nonsense. And they've proved from the very beginning to the very end, that relative motion is just a big con. Yeah. 
frame of reference, relative motion is the, the con that covers the whole thing up. I think a lot of flat earthers know this, uh, but the physics guys repeat it like a man mantra. You know, it's relative, it's the observer. And I keep saying, well, it's not the observer, you're actually the point that's rotating. You're not looking at it, you're it, you are it. So it's hard for them to get the head around. So I hope that was a bit clearer. It's easier if got yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for explaining that because you know it's just good uh, to refresh people's memories. Well, that's, uh, even that bit. Yeah, well, that's that's a new point, uh, really. The thing is, as I'm discussing it with more and more people, you find easier ways of putting your points across. So, a lot of people come on my channel and go, "How have you got the patience to chat to these people for so long?" But I'm fine tuning the argument, making it, <coughs> making it, you know, a long conversation that can make in two lines now. And they're devastating. So that's the beauty of putting stuff out, which I have done from a year ago. I've been working on this. I'm, I'm building up my knowledge and how to discuss it. Yeah, well, we're only we're only people, aren't we? You know, like a few years ago we were doing that, and now we do this. No one's trained us. No one's trained me to do the hangouts or talk on that. No one's training us. We're not professionals. That's what I mean. You know, well, we're just we're the people. No, well, I think. All, all flat earthers have been doing it for the last two or three years are getting better at what they're doing, getting better at communicating, and they're getting better at providing the information and pointing it out. But you only have to look at the information that's come out. You've got this stuff I've just put out, but you've got Ramsey's putting stuff out about observations, quantum eraser, glow busters, and it's all quality stuff that's coming out from loads of content providers. And there's loads of content providers that are hidden still that you find now and again. It's not like it used to. Yeah, in, in a way, even if we don't like these words, because they mean different things in the world, <laughs> scientists and all that. But you're turning, we're all turning into mini scientists and so forth. Like even Dave on his camera doing his, doing his moon races and stuff like that. Like it's all, you're, you're turning into the people who have the real information. And uh, yeah, well, we're living in this um, thing that's floating through space. Well, I think that's the beauty of it. We're all becoming the little tiny specialists on a little bit. You know, I'm no massive physicist that knows all about physics, but I know about the rotation moving and all the physics involved in that. I've specialised in that one point. So I can talk to anybody at any level about that point. So, and that's the beauty. Like Dave's gone on the moon. He knows all about the moon. It's incredible the information he comes out. But and he know, but he knows a bit about everything else, but he specializes in the moon. Other people specialize in water levels, light refraction. Um, we're all becoming experts, little tiny experts in little tiny bits, all getting together and just devastating the globe, which is brilliant. It, take, it takes time. You know, if you look at my very early videos, I was putting stuff out, but I was thinking out loud, trying to get feedback off people. But as you progress and think about things, you make little mistakes or big mistakes or whatever, you learn from them and then you get better. And that's what's happening. Everyone's getting better. Everyone that's still about is getting better at what they do. What they don't realise as well is the other people is that they're not learning anything. They're trying to listen and argue with you, but you have to learn the globe mathematics to be able to explain the other stuff. You see what I mean? So Correct. you're... You know, more, we know more, you know, flat earthers know more about the globe, the thing they're trying to get away from than, you know. Oh, definitely. definitely. <laughs> mm. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, you have a conversation with someone, it's a globe, uh, you know, and just ask them a simple question, how fast does it go? How big is it? And they haven't got a clue. And that that's the vast majority of people, but at first glance. So, yeah, it, it is a hard one, but uh, I'm aiming at getting at the physics guys, the people that know the stuff, and it's, it's probably the hardest one to get in on because they're the hardcore it is no way not a globe <clears throat> so if i can get them questioning each other about this reality they think they've got which i think that's what i'm doing that'll break the camel's back that'll just it'll just snowball from there we know the physicists and professionals in back rooms are all chatting about this but they're going to start having to ask answer questions openly I've got friends who are teachers and are sick to death of being asked about is the earth flat, but they have no answers. So um, it's happening all over the place. That's what they're terrified of. People are asking questions. They're not, they can't find the right place to go for answers. 
because we're we're all hidden. But when the thing is, you know what as well though, I think you know I wish it had been called maybe Flat Horizon or maybe what it is is the thing we really need to go on is we're not moving. You mean the flat Earth? She called Flat Horizon. You mean? Yeah, because flat Earth people don't. Because do you know something? Myself, right? Yeah. I realise that if you drive, I just want, sorry, diversing here, but if you drive from Dover to here, you know, you've got the white cliffs of Dover. So if yeah. you drive from Dover to here, there aren't really that many hills. It's not like you're going to be going up and down and up. I'm not saying there aren't a few hills or whatever on the way here, but it's basically quite flat all the way to here. Then 10 miles past me is Swindon. And when you get to Swindon, they go down this hill called Blunsden Hill. And it's got yeah. a peak on it. It's not the biggest. Well, it's, I think if it's got a peak on it, it's more than a hill, isn't it? It's obviously classified as a bit, bit more like a mountain. So they have to go down this. And I, was, I suddenly thought about it, that Swindon is like on the edge of the edge of a Grand Canyon. They go down this hill. Oh, yeah. but that means Devon, Cornwall and all of them, uh, you know, Wiltshire, they live down there and we live up here on the hills. But nobody explains that to us. So I'm living on a plateau up here. And then there yeah. is like a, you know, swing. I'm not saying it's quite the Grand Canyon, but I'm just saying if you imagine just an edge of that, then they go down that hill and then Devon and Cornwall live down there on another plane. Uh, well, there was a guy doing some interesting Do you understand stuff. that, though? That is just so yeah. freaky. Like, where does it start going up and down for everyone else? You know, I, I, you know what I mean? I almost need to now start getting in a camper van and just... And mapping it out myself because that is crazy. I never thought about it. We live <laughs> up here, they live down there. Well, have you heard the one about south is up and north is down, or the other way around? I can't remember which one it was. There was a guy doing a lot of work on that south is actually up and north is down. He was doing some interesting stuff. I didn't grasp it all, but I, I did start thinking about what he was saying. But uh, I don't think a lot of pay, people paid him attention. So he might have disappeared. So there's, there's, there's tons of interesting ideas. I'm just saying, we've got no idea. And you know, we've got no idea. And look at this as well. Someone was telling me that, because I put out on Unscrambled about a double rainbow, and then someone said I saw a double rainbow. One of them was going into, um, you know, like a, into the electricity thing. You know, into the, it was coming out of that. There's, yeah, there's lots of weird stuff. But imagine what the future's going to be like. All these little people are doing science, proper science, that no one else is doing. Imagine how powerful it's going to be in the future when thousands and thousands and thousands of people are doing science and they know exactly what they're talking about. Because people are not going to give up on this and just go, oh, all right, okay. They're going to keep going and going, experimenting and working. It's it really out. a weird place to be because, you know, like maybe younger people and maybe people whose children have grown up, it is going to attract a bit more. Maybe if you've got two or three little children, your time is taken up quite differently. But like, once you know, I can't go back and pretend it's something that it's not. I can't. You can't. I think, I think some people take a break from it because it can get quite intense. And it's it's a bit Especially of a ride. Especially people so, are arguing I mean, with you. You know, I'm not into. I don't like all that myself. No, I don't. I don't like arguing. That's why I can't go in uh, some of the debates because it's just people having a go at each other. I'm mean, I'm not interested in that. Uh, it's not about winning any arguments. Do you know what? As well, I've I've got a little video that somebody I'm going to put it out and unscrambled. But he was talking about things, and he was just saying, Facebook, for instance, it's full of memes, and it really means now that even if we've got a generation of people who are businessmen and are being paid really a mile emotionally because they only play with Facebook and memes and that they're about the age of five so we're really quite childish you know, no one's emotionally your mum all these people they haven't really trained you or helped you not really that's the system that we're in and so basically they're getting everything off the internet which is the memes which is some childish game on you on Facebook so I'm, I'm just not into all that uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that there's a worse side of Facebook, which we all know about. And I, well, I can't see any good side of it, to be honest. But uh, people have pulled away from I think that. when you know, for instance, like the reason was they, they said, you know, this thing came up on your phone, put your uh, telephone numbers and all that on it. And a lot of people would have pressed that and never even thought that, oh, they've just got all your telephone numbers. 
Uh, I just watched the, I can't remember the name of the film. Yeah, I mean, like, what I'm saying is, yeah. and, and anyway, you know, like, for instance, I don't go around YouTube, um, Facebook and go to all the other sites. I only stick to Flat Earth. Suddenly, like last, a couple of weeks ago, it said that was an illegal action and they banned this video sort of thing from Facebook. And I'm thinking, all I did was copy the news, you know, like my version of what was going on and stick it out. But it was the news and it was illegal. You think, what the hell do I want? You know, I, I do struggle <laughs> myself. Like, why do I want to be a part of things which are so prejudiced and biased? Well, uh, I think... Oh, I think things will change. There's a lot of changes happening. I know you just cover flat earth, but if you look at politics, money, what's going on in other countries, there's massive things. But that's not real. None Some... of it's real. My yeah. my vision, right, is because yeah. of the way that the videos of Boris and that, they film those weeks before because they already know the outcome. And I did a, I'm a different person. You're doing the rotation. But I looked up. You know, like it was like this was supposed to be, as he said, a momentous victory. But I went to um, I went to ITV News the, the day when he's actually come back to Downing Street saying it was momentous and it was an 80 seat majority, which is more than anybody's got in a really long time. Yeah. And um, 3000 people had watched it 24 hours later. His momentous bit back. So they're lying. We didn't vote like they said we didn't. They, it was always going to be an 80 seat majority. It's all planned before. This is the way that YouTube has treated us. It's pretty obvious that we're now in the system with the big business and we have to abide by it. Otherwise, YouTube get rid of us or don't like it or demonetize you or do things to you. So we're stuck in that system, even in YouTube now. I'm not saying it might not have been there, it's just got worse. So just, oh, just, oh, it's just, yeah. Well, if, if, if we're not doing damage and the little people who are putting news out are not doing any damage, then they just leave us alone. But they're attacking you know, In your face, they're attacking us. Uh, so we're doing damage, we're not well, to their system, not to our system. So that's why they need to control us. That, that's what tells me something's changing. People are waking up. People are looking at things differently than they used to. No, they're not totally awake. They're just real. What you mean is you can act. I've tried to do it a little bit on unscrambled, right? The odd sometimes someone will say flat Earth, but I don't keep it as a flat Earth channel. But just to accept, does it matter? Does it is it really a threat for someone to say flat Earth or whatever it is? Is it really a threat? And because they're because they're um, you know like striking it out so much, you know all the search engines are saying you can't find anything. If you go flat Earth, you get somebody debunking it. Um, why is it such a threat? It doesn't well, matter. Why can't, what does it matter if you've got different models? What does it, it matter? It but it ma does because they've lied so badly. But what I'm saying right. is, if they hadn't lied, what would it matter? You know, when I was learning to be a receptionist, I had to learn all these different ways that hotels don't even use anymore. But you still mm. had to learn them because it was part of the course. So what are they saying? We hate that hotel now because they use that system. Their system. What does it matter? But it obviously does, and it's obviously you know like because they're lying. Well, imagine if everybody realised that where we live is a lie, they would question everything. Everything they're told would be questioned. Every government decision would be questioned. Every drug, everything would be questioned. The same as we're doing now, but everybody would be doing it if the lie was out there. So that would terrify the hell out of everybody. News media wouldn't work, nothing. And all this this brainwashing would work because people would step back, listen to the Yeah, but you know what I you know what it seems? It does seem that they, they, they buy the news. The news gets bought. They make the news to whoever it is and they're all in on it together. And I just think that the politicians, the politics, they're yeah. actually just the front of it. So they come out and go, Well, we've done this and we've done that, but they're just a bunch of actors. Or yeah, virtual reality yeah. or cartoons. None of it's real. And the people that are running it are not them. Uh, but from what I can see, it's not just one group running it trying to run everything. There's a, a few groups trying to run everything. So it's, uh, it's a good, good group that's pretty bad, but they're better than the, the really bad group that want to kill us all. And they're all fighting now to get control of the system in a nice way. So will make loads of money off everybody. And in a good, you know, in a bad way, they want to kill everyone and have a Hunger Games society. 
So there's, 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 there's about four or five families that I can make out that do rule the whole world, basically. But the, and they're all fighting amongst each other. And it's all being put on the table so people can see what the hell's been going on and what lies have been told. So that's the picture I'm seeing, is there is a battle going on. We're only seeing the top of it. You know, like the uh, the, the, the Ukrainian airplane getting shot down. That was all total manipulation. And it was, you know, it was designed to get America into, into war, that plane getting blown up, but it didn't work. They thought America would retaliate and send missiles out back into to them. And in the meantime, they shot the airplane down and they could blame America straight away and it'd be war. Chris, none of it's real. We don't go to war. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, but... It's but those are the stories that they feed everybody and everybody... They, I mean, I was into it. Like, the Gulf War to me, the first one, because I was quite young, was horrifying. I wrote privately because they said, yeah. it looks like we really are going to go to war. And I believed we were and we did. Well, supposedly we did because we didn't really. But anyway, they took us to a war, didn't they? They showed it to us, which they don't do anymore. Um, well, well, we thought we were watching something real. But, um, yeah, just... Uh, oh, my goodness, I thought... Uh, um, the, the only experience I've oh, yeah, I wrote to a soldier, a sailor and a pilot. And I said I was very sorry for them because I really believed we were going in. It forged a friendship with, a, with one of them. And these, yeah. but what I'm saying is, look what it did. There was pilots, there was soldiers, all these people put into this whole system where they're being used, just like us. Oh, layers yeah. of it. It's just incredible. Well, I, I speak to ex-soldiers now and again, and just say, "Well, you were being used," and they some of them turn around and say, "Well, yeah, I know. I was lied to, told total bullshit, killed people for for no reason other than to, to make someone rich. That was it." So some realise, some don't. Uh, don't but more people seem to be realising the crap than just fall for it. And it's not with everything. It's not when you go out and... Yeah, oh, because I think what it is, is it's a bit like, say you come along, oh, you're going to be a soldier, and you look how they put the adverts, you're going to learn how to do engines, you're going to learn to go, you're going to visit all these countries. Yeah. Or start cooking something. And um, basically, aftercare, there isn't any. I remember... For another no. reason, looking up, like, say, uh, post-traumatic post stress place. There's only one in England, and they all the soldiers go there. They put them there. It's like there is nothing for them. Once they've been not a soldier anymore, it's like being kicked out, and that's it. Get on with it yourself now. After now traumatising the people because they've killed other people. Well, well, it's the same with firemen and the police. They go through really bad shit as much as, well, not as much as the army, but, you know, they see stuff. But there's nothing there. No, there's, there's a, a phone number you can phone. There's, there's like an agency that does counselling. That's it. Uh, so you just have to deal with it yourself and with your mates. But so they're all the same. They don't give a shit about us. That's it. People think, you know, you're just a number. I used to hate it when I was at work and people, oh, it's a great company. And look what they're doing. And I say, you're just a number. It's, it's a load of bollocks. They're kidding you. They don't give a shit. And they don't give a shit. And it, it comes around and, and you realise, well, no, this company just wants money off, you know. And when you leave, how many people from that company actually phone you up? You might, you know, might get one person that you're really friendly with. Yeah, but you know what? Places of work used to be where you were allowed to have friendships and things. You just did. Yeah. But now people are almost, you're not allowed to talk to anybody on your shift. It's turning into this, this, it's just like a computer. They don't want you smiling. They don't want you happy. Do you know what? If you, if you treat your workforce good, not saying that you're not the boss, but you treat your sort of equals, okay, you've got to make the decision, but you treat them with respect. Get a lot more from the workforce. Yeah. Well, I remember the days when you used to have massive Christmas parties for the kids and everyone would have a fate and all go out and go. everyone would have a day off and go and have a, like, it's a knockout thing going on. But that doesn't happen anymore. Or I think it happens down south in, in big... Yeah, Britain. but you know what, though? On one thing, we can blame them for everything, but a community starts in your own back garden they can't make that for you we have to do that ourselves yeah correct but they've made people so terrified of the next door neighbor that they don't they just That's want to sit down very true very true and really wants to keep themselves yeah they're terrified of getting to know people and that's all done by television media and you know all the control systems they just make people want to stay in the house go to work get in debt stay in the house and then go back to work that's all they want uh, well, that's changing. 
slowly, but <clears throat> I think it's getting there. I live in Rochdale, and people never used to talk to anybody hardly. But now, you know, there's community groups opening up. There's uh, Muslim groups. You know, I've got a few Muslim friends, and they're all coming up. Oh, Merry Christmas! You know, Happy New Year! Even people on the streets, you know, people are meet. They're all saying Happy Christmas. And the Muslim guy, Muslim people, that's changing things. You know, Happy. But the media tells you it's all, no one likes anybody. It's all hate and it's rubbish. That's why they're pushing the hate thing. I think because people have started getting on together and now they need to push hate to get yeah, everyone Yeah, and apart. if only they know, because you know, like here, obviously we've had, without sounding too horrible here, we've had, a, like the doors have been open and a lot of immigrants have come in. But this is what, yeah. what they do. They keep moving the people around. On purpose, they were brought here. On purpose, we were we went to America in the eighteen hundreds. It's all on purpose. Yeah, well, the, the, I think they need to move a new group in that they can get people to not like and hate and basically hate. Uh, but it doesn't work. I've seen, you know, it works a bit, but nowhere near what I think they want. They want people totally hating each other. Yeah, they'd love that, you know. Uh, but they don't. Yeah, they do because we live in something that's quite demonic. But yeah, but people don't. I mix. I get. I see a lot of different people across a lot of different walks of life, and people don't hate each other. I've I've got some people I like judges. That I... No, I think what it is is they're telling us this is all going on, and this is what they're trying to promote in all the you know the TV reality shows. Yeah. But ultimately, when I look at things, I'm not saying crime doesn't happen, but we're actually quite peaceful, all of us. Yes, definitely. And we're, ca we're caring people, we care about each other. But you know, don't see that until something happens. But people do care about other people. Yeah. Not everybody, but the vast majority do. They care about everybody. And it doesn't matter what religion you are, what, where you come from, what colour you are, anything. People care about each other. That's what I've seen. You know, I lived in Manchester for quite about 20 years, and I never ever saw any trouble in Manchester City Centre at all, not even a fight. I, I, uh, I was a witness to a murder that happened outside my front door, that's another story. But uh, other than that, nothing. No violence, no stabbings, no gunfight, nothing. I didn't see anything. And I travelled around Manchester quite a lot. So very strange. But if there's anything that happens... It's I know, and, and but I noticed something myself. I was... Put, I've got a video waiting to go out, but I haven't put it out yet on the other channel. And what it was is she was telling one thing, and then I, she was like my hero because she actually told us that the press had been bought. But the next thing is she's showing us rioting and everything happening. This is what they do. We don't know that's really happening. We don't know any of this is real. They keep feeding us with this stuff. Feed, feed, feed. No, I've, I've, I've seen all this with me for, first hand. I went to a demonstration in Manchester. Right, and I just I was watching. I wasn't watching the crowds or listening to what was being said. I was watching the police and how they were interacting and everything. And then the cameraman's came around, and they set up this shot, changed the the, the riot police to hard-looking right to us, basically. And then next minute, there's all these flares start firing, firing across from this Antifa lot, and the cameras were rolling. So they set all this up. Someone who had been told to set these flares off to rile everybody up. Cameras roll, and that was what was shown on telly. Now, everyone was getting on up until that one little point, and that's what they showed. They'd manipulated the whole whole stage <coughs> so this would happen, and that would be filmed, and that would, oh, that's what would be shown. It's a big eye-opener if you go to these things and just keep your eyes open, talk to people, and look around. Uh, uh, it's nothing at all what they portray it, it, it to be. None of it is. Yeah, all they, all they want to show is that everything is in unrest, but the only people who are making the unrest is them. And it's a bit like someone in this video I was telling you earlier on. He was going, we don't need to know who they are. They are there, though, and they do it. So, yeah, those lot, whoever they are, you know, they just want, you know, through the media, through the politics, whatever you want to call it, because it's all part of the same thing. They want the unrest. They want yeah. us feeling really bad, and I think a lot of people do. Well, all the news agencies and all of the, the papers and everything, there's a central website. They have their own little, little internet with all the news on it, with talking points from the government or you know, main interests. And they can all put it away uh, across any way they like in this country. 
but they've got to put them talking points across that day because so all the news and papers will all say the same thing but in a different way every day because all the information comes from one central core of information in america it's worse because they're actually given a script and they all read off the same script we've seen it so one central point for news and it's pushed out to all the agencies <coughs> and not most of the agencies are well, all that's because they're all in on it together correct yeah Ooh. i mean do you know what to even stop the deep fake there is software that YouTube and Facebook could put in to stop us being lied to, you know, and maybe take 75% of it away because none of it's true. But then we'd lose the news. We'd use all those crime watch programs. We'd lose NASA. We'd lose the politics because it's all that they're all doing it to us. And they're, oh, it's the press. They just love the games, don't they? Uh, well, like I say, it's all, it's all a psychological game they're playing. Uh... But people are quite strong, but they, they don't go away quite so easily, especially when they realise that they've been lied to on such a big scale, like the Flat Earth, for instance. Uh, yeah, that, that just wakes everybody up and they don't take any shit. They want to know the where, why and how. They, they just don't go, oh, OK, you, you've sorted it out. Uh, I, I think this year is going to be massive. Uh, Feeling in my bones, talking. What? To because it's the 2020. No, not nothing to do with 2020. It's just how what I'm seeing and um, because I look at a lot of stuff, a lot of different areas, and talk to different a lot of different people about things. Uh, my picture is things are massively changing. So many things at the same time, and I know there's like the astrology side of it. They're saying there's going to be massive things happening. Well, that's aside from that. Yeah, I'd agree. There is massive things happening. But it's wait and see. It might be an opportunity. Thing is, though, if I'm, if you know, if you take the bit I've just told you about the election, if only three thousand, I mean, you know, for anybody who's in another country, we have ITV, we have BBC and Sky. That's probably where we go for the news, isn't it? I suppose some people might go to Channel Four, but basically, there's those three stations. If the next day after an eighty seat a unanimous victory, then how come only three thousand people watched it on ITV? We didn't vote. Some people voted, but let's just say maybe only 10 or 15, 20% of the people voted and they lied about the rest and made it a, a, a victory like that when it wasn't. I think a big marking point is this Brexit on uh, the end of January. The, the rulers that be, Europe and the central governments, you know, the global government, whatever they want, that won't happen if we come out of Europe. So if that happens and we get what we want, then you know that things are changing because they don't want that. You know they don't want that, but it's happening. No, but that's, it's not true. We're in one world order and we always will be while they're there. It doesn't matter who you vote yeah, for. I, I agree. But we're going to get one of them and they're in the system and they're playing in the system. Yeah, maybe I'm being naive, but my hopes are, and my feelings are that things are getting better. Oh, yes. It may, at the moment, it looks like UK is a bit different because we're coming out of Europe. We've beaten them. Well, but there's, well, so, we're, not, we're not out yet. And you know there's back doors on this thing. Correct. Correct. That, that's what I'm saying. So it looks rosy and bright now, but, but you'll wait till it actually gets on the table and it happens. So you can build your hopes up all you want until it happens. It's, it's not happened. Uh, I agree. But there's so many things on the table now all over the world. Uh, that are happening. You know, there's so many massive changes that obviously the the evil powers that would be not want. Do you know what? It's not even the piece of land we're standing on. It's the layers and layers through the politics, education, medication, history. It's just disgusting how whoever thought this up was a genius. But what a horrible, demonic, disgusting system to put the people in. Basically, it's communism without using a word. Well, we have not got democracy. Uh, well, it's like Crow Seven Seven says: we're all little rabbits in a the field. They don't give a shit about us. You know, if 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 they want to get rid of one people, one person, and kill seven hundred, they'll shoot up an airplane down just to get that one person. They're not asked. It's, it's, they won't even think about it. My, uh, and you don't forget, you just said that, and that's what they tell us. I mean, for instance, of this video I've made, Trump now says that he has bombed these places in Iraq, Iran, uh, Iraq. And what it is, is with precision, he's taken that person out. We've managed to go to another country, kill all these people, 
but we can't sort our education, medication and the rest in our own countries. All these things. This man is being impeached and basically it's embarrassing. So he's got there's got to be another thing going on to take the people's attention away rather. But it's all it's all part of the game. So more hype, more fear, more hype, more fear. Because everybody like, not the Middle East. No, because no one wants their son going to war or their husband. I think I think uh, I think there's something a lot different than you think is going on with all that. Uh, Trump's not been impeached by a million, a million years. If you look at the evidence, there isn't any. Uh, so I know, but look at the waste of people. I mean, that Nancy Pelosi has a patch on her nose. You know, no one's checking these things. No one's saying anything. Like she, there's something wrong that nobody noticed. She had a patch on her nose. Yeah. You know, like, but not just that. Like all that money wasted. All those coming out every day with a statement. You know, using the the, the airtime on the news. The whole thing. It's just disgusting. All part of this game. Well, you, you know, the, the money isn't money. It's just a piece of paper. That's it. So it's, you can give someone a piece of uh, a newspaper and say that's worth you know ten million pounds. It's probably just as valuable as actually ten million pounds in power notes. So uh, it's all a con. It's the complete system's a con, and it takes a lot of people to wake. To, to well, I think a lot of people are waking up, but it's going to take quite a few more. And I think the things that are happening are going to, may do that, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. I think we've got an opportunity to wake up, uh, and whether we take it or not is another thing. Because it only takes one generation, and once that one generation's switched over, then it, it's just a reset of the system, like the Matrix. So, yeah, because all our information's on a cloud now, all our history's on a cloud on the internet. So one switch, one disaster, and it's all, all gone. That's true, and don't forget, they change the history. Whoever wins changes the history and makes it what they want. That's yeah. the sad bit. And oh, well, do you know something else as well? It's, I feel really, I mean, you know, you have to go and do your own homework and people don't even do that. But, you know, like they, a lot of people thought this new flat earth. They don't realise it was always whatever you want to call them. People knew we weren't moving and we were on these planes. And, um, but the thing is that, like you said, it takes a generation to forget. Basically, we found on hard copy, you know, like documents and stuff yeah. you could find the flat earth society not the one that is today this guy in in the you know who kept on going with flat earth from the you know from before from when we were turned into a globe him and his wife yeah. had this library and everything the library got burnt down she died he died and then suddenly the whole thing disappears not in the late 90s and doesn't then reappear for nearly 20 years and because they left that 20 years gap people are going what's this flat earth thing i mean when amy a friend amy who comes on our hangouts when her sister heard it she thought what's that medieval thing that you're talking about that's medieval talk and that's how they've got it two two, two nearly 20 years that's all it took for everybody to, to forget yeah I've got, I've got a friend he's like 90 odd and i mentioned flat earth to him and he's, he's just said, oh looking into that about 20 30 years ago there was some guy I can't, he couldn't remember all the details he said oh i've looked into it so i told him to go and have another look but he's not on the internet. So it was interesting. Yeah. So it's wait and see. Did you know how easy they can do it to the people? Because basically, you know, our grandparents who aren't here anymore, they, yeah. they didn't think we were, I bet you they didn't think we were on a spinning ball. I just wonder, you know, all that time when they had the news out about us going to the moon, I wonder what the people were really thinking. Were they really thinking, oh, they've got to the moon, or is that really the shape of us? Um, Do you see well, what I mean? Like they only talk about the moon, really, don't they? They never, they don't talk about the people realizing it's flat. I mean, sorry, they're a globe. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they don't do I'm, all that. They pretend like all that was happening anyway, and that the people were looking for the moon. But I don't think that's the case. I just think they've omitted it all. I think that if you could have kept those newspaper clips, you'll see that people were talking about it quite a lot. But they've omitted all that now, so you'll, you won't know. I mean, there's papers saying that it was what a load of crap it was done in a studio. Well, maybe, or is this real? Could we go to the moon? Um, oh, my God, they're saying we're a planet. We know we're a flat Earth. You know, there might be more places that felt like that, but you're not going to see any of that information now because they've omitted it. Yeah, after, I spoke to an African guy, and he said it would get taught it's flat in some of the schools. Uh, I didn't check up on it, but he says, oh, yeah, we've, we've always known it's flat in, in certain parts of Africa. Go, right, OK. Uh, I had a chat to him with some other people, and brilliant. Uh, I think you're probably right. Uh, I don't know. Well, we, we learn history. So, about... so what I'm saying is that people did. It's just that 
that it takes what a generation two generations and don't forget like i'm saying imagine all those people that now live in england that have come from other countries in the last 20 years all their cultures are here they concentrate oh look there's rioting there's all this and they put and we don't like we say we should be following the stars or and we should be losing our own gardens and growing our own vegetables we don't do any of these things anymore correct not even me uh, uh yeah following the stars i think that's dying a death but we'll have to wait and see uh <coughs> i don't know what i'm very optimistic for this year but we'll have to wait and see i was optimistic last year as well and things have changed i think There's, things got worse but some things have got better uh for me personally, anyway. So, now all we can do is keep doing what we're doing and see what happens. But at the moment, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah, which you, which you're doing, which you're putting your videos out. Uh, I, I mean, I mean, thank you. I mean, you know, everybody that comes on has got a bit, their little bit of the puzzle, but we have to thank you all for doing it because maybe your stuff will stay somewhere and someone will see it in years to come. One, one way not, or another. Yeah, it's not just that. I think what one key thing is gonna gonna be put out that's gonna change everything. That's my thoughts. Something really simple is gonna be put on the table, and I'm hoping it's this thing that I put out, and it's gonna just cause a snowball of questioning, and it's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until they can't stop the question because people will have the answers as the questions are being asked, and it'll just get bigger and bigger, and that's happening. Like I said, the school's kids have been asking the teachers. The college kids are asking the professors. And the professors can't answer it properly because they're coming back to the flat earthers and asking the question and going, well, ask him this, because I've had it. Uh, and then they come back again. Well, he said this. Well, we're asking this. So it's, it's like uh, it's a big snowball. If When kids get something in their head they want to know about, they, they, won't, they don't stop. They're like a bulldog with a ball. They won't let go until they get an answer that means something to them and don't do that. they're pretending on the media that everybody's running around after the government and everybody's listening but they're not and if nobody's voting for them then nobody's taking any notice of them in the first place no it's, it's exactly it's all controlled but who's controlling it uh, i think that changes varies but wait and see it might turn, all turn to shit all the power goes off you can't well, get anything out of the couch thought this is why maybe harry and megan are going because they already know it's coming to an end uh, where they, they got Canada? We don't want to be a part of it anymore. We've done our bit. Bye. Uh, well, Canada's not probably not a very good place to go. I think New Zealand's the the, the place where they're all planning on disappearing to if it goes to shit. Uh, but, I, I don't know. Yeah, this 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 so you know. It's a bit strange though that he, that they've suddenly decided. Well, you don't. I don't know. It's probably on the news tonight. I just saw it as a video on YouTube rather than watching the news, but. You know, supposing there was these big meetings today. I'm just wondering, we want out now. Everybody's noticing we're not real. We're just actors. So I want to go. Uh, well, maybe he's found out that his mother was murdered and they were lying to him. And he's had enough. You don't know. You, you have no idea. Can I tell you something? Do you know what's really disappointing? You know, getting into the way I look at the other channel, Unscrambled. I looked up this picture of um, the christening. And in it, it's supposed to be both of Diana's sisters. But when you look, at Diana's sisters. One of them looks nothing like her at all. One of them's brown hair, well, she did have, and she's just totally different. The other sister doesn't really look like her at all, but there's a few things like maybe the nose or something, or her hair, she's blonde like Diana was. Looking at the picture, there's no way she could turn. I overlaid a picture of Diana on her, and I'm, I think Diana was at the christening myself. And I know that sounds really crazy, but that's what it looked like. It was not her sister. Her sister doesn't look anything like her. This person looked like an aged Diana. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. Yeah, well, you could be perfectly right. People die and they've not died. They just changed their identity and moved on to some else. Yeah. Well, they did that with the uh, shuttle crew, didn't they? So <laughs> blatantly, openly, they all died, including the teacher, but now you can go and visit them. And the photographs are everywhere. So, and they get away with it. And they didn't even change their names, did they, some of them? Yeah, so yeah, so they can do it so blatantly. But all happens to have twins or whatever. It's it's just, you know, why can't, like, uh, a famous, like, Bill Gates do it? 
it's so easy. You wouldn't if you walked down the street with a cap on, you wouldn't recognise him, would you? If he if he if he dad his little eyes to him. No, and also, you know, Michael Jackson showed us by dressing up, remember he dressed um he had a prosthetic suit on to be the yeah. white guy in one of his videos. And and, and according to this um little video that was made about him, but we don't even know if any of these people are real. They're all probably actors. But um he basically said he was loving it because nobody knew who he was. He could go out dressed up as other people. No one would recognise him. Yeah, well, it doesn't take much. You know, if someone says, you look like, uh, what, Chris Evans? And you go, well, I'm not Chris Evans. What are you going about? And you go, oh, OK. And that'll be it. No one's going to pull you and tie you down and start beating you up saying you are Chris Evans. Oh, they just take your word for it and just move on. So... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's. Uh, I think it's a it's a mixture of all these different things. It's not just one thing. It's just total deception, deception about where we live, how people are, the religions, all that. It's just total, absolute deception from start to finish. I think that's all it's about. I totally agree with you. So just you know, we've we've done fifty minutes now. Yeah. Um, tell me what's your plans then. For the next bit with more more videos, more explanations, uh, uh, hangout well, <laughs> hangouts like this. Yeah, I, Karen, I love doing hangouts with you. It'd be great if we had a camera because I could do some demonstrations, but we'll get there. Uh, yeah, I've got to, probably another two videos to make, and then I'm going to move on to an experiment, which I'm really excited about. So uh, get that done, and then uh, that's me done. But I've said that before. Uh, and I get another point, another idea, and just put it out. So me putting stuff out is me putting an idea out. I'm not saying I'm 100% right on everything. I'm just saying here's something you need to look at, figure it out. And, but with this rigid body rotation thing, that is 100% on the button. You know, but other ideas I'll throw out and say, well, you know, how about this, how about that? That's, that's my thoughts. I'll just put little short things out just for people to look at and go, oh, that's worth thinking about, or, or not. So, but it's getting views. Your view counts are being messed with. You know, my subscribers shoot up 100, and then 10 minutes later, I look, and they've all gone down again. You know, and the views on the videos get messed about with. Your emails get messed about with. It's, it's just you've got to realize that's happening. I just carry on. So. That, yeah, I, I agree as we had that problem because I actually off my own email privately emailed you the hangout link and it never got to you. Yeah, well, that happens a lot. You know, I, I email flat earthers and they don't get it. It's in the junk. You know, and then you take it out of the junk saying, this is not a junk email, but every time it goes in the junk. And the same when I get stuff sent to me. Uh, it just disappears or doesn't arrive. But you know, And they've got receipts for the email and it's just really strange what's going on. But I think it's all AI type stuff. If little programs they write, so you can put his name in and just fuck him up a bit. And then you can put your on, on totally fuck him up, you know, just switch the switch, you know, where everything goes to. Yeah, we, don't, we don't know if that AI is doing things. Well, when you talk about, I'm not on about AI, it's just programs within the system that if A happens, then do B. If B happens, do C. If, if A gets an email, put it in this box instead of this one. And it's not hard to write little programs if you know how the system works and you can pour it into the system to keep to mess things up. So if you're in charge of the security of the system or the government, you can put little crap bits in that mess everything up. Because yeah. we're all using Windows operating systems, most of us. Yeah. Yeah. And Apple, you know, how bad's that for censorship? Apple, blatant. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty um damn below the belt <coughs> stuff, isn't it? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can go and stuff on my laptop. Uh, but if you go on the wireless iPad, it's blocked. Can't go on it. Can't find it. Does not exist. Uh, or if I go on DuckDuckGo, I can find stuff. But if I go on uh, Google, it doesn't exist. It's it's just really mad. And then if you go on another search engine, it, it, it you can find stuff that you can't find with others. It's uh, it's like I put key words in. Yeah. But you do know, don't you? They tailor make it for you. But you know, like even on YouTube, we try and find like the twin towers and that. You have to go through about three pages now before you find a building coming down. Uh, well, well I, I found I was when I was doing research on what I'm doing now. When I was putting these like complicated 
uh, lines of words in like rotate, rotation, general relativity, blah, blah, blah. If I did it too much, this little this porno started popping up all over the place. It's trying to distract you to go to look at all these like naked pictures of people having sex. That it just flash past it to find what you're looking for. And then you can find it. But there's no reason why that should happen unless they were trying to distract you from looking for what you're looking for. So we I had just a couple closed of hangouts, by again. the way, about two or three months ago, where we had the sound off on and it sounded like you can hear my phone. It just sounded like a marble going around a glass. To be honest. Every time they talked, there was this whirling noise. And I thought, how could Santos not notice that? But then we had Martin Leakey on. So that's different people on the Hangout. We were all all right. And exactly the same to Martin Leakey. How could that be? So that, that Santos and Martin Leakey, and there was probably about eight or nine other people, ten people, whatever it was, there was two, three, yeah, about, well, about seven or eight other people on those two Hangouts. Didn't happen to any of them, just the guests. Uh, yeah, it's Google's messing about. Uh, I noticed that on people's channels I watch. When they're st just about to tell you about something that's crucial, that channel goes apart, or that marble sound will happen all the way through it. Goes, so you barely hear it. So, uh, not so bad now. It was really bad. Oh, you've heard that before then? That like marble, is that, that's all I can describe it. It's like marbles going around a jar. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I've heard it on on YouTube channels uh, where it's, it's just really it's like background interference, like a marbles rolling around a wooden jar. Yeah, on the same place that we're doing this hangout, they did it. Yeah, but it, yeah, it was people doing new stuff and then putting information out and talking about the money. It was a hangout doing it then. Or uh, it, was it? it was just someone YouTube did people doing YouTube live, and but it was coming through, uh, and you'll notice right really crucial information. People have put really good stuff out about money, how to get around systems. The, the, the channels go right down to really crap and the picture disappears and you can hardly hear them you know, when they're talking about really good stuff. Yeah, YouTube, they've told us that they're allowed to do what they want and they sometimes take the last 30 seconds of the video off. Yeah. But they just play and then suddenly it just stops and I'm like, oh, <laughs> what? Uh, well, it's like when I, when I put the my first video up, uh, I've played it on my computer, really crisp, really good, up, and it sounds like I've, I've got a frog in my throat most of the way through it. But it didn't sound like that when I did it, I put it up. But, but when it was up, it just sounded crap. You always do lose a little bit of quality from your computer to YouTube. You just do. Yeah. Like the quality of the picture just changes a little bit. It does. Yeah, I, I realise that. But if, if you watch the CNN news... But not, all, not like yours, not not the same as yours. That's just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, but we've, we've just got to work through it, get better, better at what we're doing. You know, I've learned to do stuff that I never thought in a million years I'd be looking at. You know, I, I did physics, what, 40 years ago. I, it was stuff that I never really needed to use again. Never thought I would, but now I'm back into it, back looking, and it's like, wow. But yeah, it's fun times, whatever you say. It's, it's, what you can use it, you mean? Now you can use the physics. Well, it's it's not. It's it's like I always see myself as someone who's got a bit of information about a lot of things in there, so I know where to go to find out information. So I know a lot of th little things that I can nowhere to go it's like a reference library so we can go and um, certain bits i know a lot about but a lot a lot of bit i know a little about so we can go and reference that so if that's doing that oh i know where to look so that's the way i work uh so yeah i've, I've not got a major physics background i did physics at school college uh so but you remember how to do vectors you know Take it a bit rusty and then you can learn learn it again basically and then great but now with the uh, online calculators you can learn how to do it again and check check out you, you're right so brilliant <coughs> but yeah i'm enjoying it it keeps you going uh senile all the things that you learned didn't realize that they weren't telling you the truth though <laughs> well that's it because if you if you really enjoy what you're learning you become really good at it because you're enjoying what you're doing and what you're learning. It's like if you're at school and you hate it, it doesn't soak in. You might get a bit, that's it. 
but you have a great teacher that you really enjoy to do the, the work and the homework. Do you know, I feel so sorry for kids because they're like, I don't want to learn all about this globe. I don't want to learn all this crap. It's all crap. And you're going, will you learn your stuff? I mean, this is in the past. Now I just say, it doesn't matter about school. That's what I think. It's a load of rubbish. Yeah. I don't actually remember a lot about being taught about the globe. It was just there in the corner and it's, that's where it is. You know? And no one asked any questions. That was it. You might have got a little bit of physics, why we don't fall off gravity, you know, when you're a kid, uh, and why Australia's upside down and doesn't fall off. I never remember anything. Yes, you're right. The globe was there, and we said the globe, but we never discussed, did anything to do with anything. Never did I at school do anything to do with it. Never. Yeah. Yeah. If you went further up into you know, higher physics and that, then you'd, you'd talk a little bit about it, but you don't go in depth. You basically parrot what, what you're supposed to learn well, well you know that um then you get through uh no critical thinking whatsoever it used to be critical thinking in schools but now it's just parroted out at the higher levels you know my grandkids who are quite young uh they're so bright so such a bright spark critical thinking is there everything's there but at, when they go higher hopefully that won't be knocked out of them but that's what it's there for i think mm. Yeah, because the children, the children know the truth. <laughs> yeah, well, well, they're not filled up with all this, you know. At the moment, they're not filled up with all this negative lie. Oh, uh, they will eventually, because they're all watching. Uh... Yeah, it happened with my daughter. You know, she went to a small school where it was only about eight in her class, and you know, it was like Ellie's lovely and kind, and everybody loves her. The children love her. The teachers love her. The moment she hit that senior school where there's a thousand kids there, she changed something chronic. It's not her fault, but she did. I didn't want her to go to that school, but she changed so much going to senior school. And in that school, all the way up to she was um, senior school, she had very small classes, almost like one-to-one -one teaching, and they yeah. treated her like a human being. All right. well, yeah, yeah it's, it's weird, because I, I had to fight uh, to get my son... Because, uh, better education because he's very bright you know like was he gifted and talented uh so i had to go and see the headmaster and force him to to uphold the policy of gifted and talented and push him to do stuff uh and it's the only way to do it otherwise he was having rows with the teachers because he was telling the maths teachers they were wrong about this wrong about that and he was right so they didn't like it so there's mega rows he was hacking the school's computer system and watching films on the no this was years ago uh, uh, and you know, the security guy and cards of tech and get all wound up. I said, well, he knows his stuff, he needs to learn. So teach him stuff, not, not just sitting there, there bored to death. Yeah, that's so, why some of the children are, are being naughty because they're even cleverer than the system and they're bored. Yeah. And to be honest, think about it. I'm not, I can't, I, I, our schooling was probably a bit the same, but. If you basically just got to watch the back of a teacher writing on a blackboard all day and there's no interaction, I'd be bored. Yeah, well, if you're not challenged in any way, uh, you're just wasting the time. Because uh, my same same son, he uh, he wants to go to university uh, to do like computer or whatever. And he got he did the first week and he got home and says, I know all this, and I know all the stuff for the next two years already because he's read all the books, loved it. He says, what's the point getting into debt? I says, well, you're spot on. You don't need to go. So he didn't, but he's very successful. He's, he's got more money than I'll ever dream of having. <coughs> so, uh, yeah. But you've got the drive, and, well, the want and the drive to do it. Yeah. You can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> and there's others of us who are just poor. <laughs> well, um, not, you probably consider me to be poor, but I'm quite rich. No, you're rich. Yeah, I'm rich because I'm a, I'm a, I have such a happy life, and I feel I'm very, very lucky to have the life that I've got. Uh, and I've not got, you know, hundreds of pounds in the bank. <coughs> so, well, I'm not in debt. So that's the magic. What does your wife make about flat earth? Just asking. Uh, she thinks I'm around the twist. No, uh, no, she she's quite happy for me to do do this. Uh, she's 
never ever said him. Uh, I just realised Patricia's there. Uh, oh yeah, hello Patricia. Uh, but yeah, uh, but whenever the family's round, it's always the, the topic of conversation. Uh, and I always promise not to bring it up, but I know someone will bring it up, so it ends up it's the conversation. Because uh, I built a big extension at the back of my house, so everyone sits in here, so you can have like 20 people in here, and they're all talking about Flat Earth by the end of the night, after a few drinks. Maybe not 20, say 15. Uh, so it, yeah, it, it can be good fun. Yeah. We don't have family meetings very often, but when we do, it's like, it always gets to Flat Earth. Really? Yeah. Can we just say Patricia? I went. I was downstairs, and then I was. I was eating something. Sorry, Chris, you didn't notice I was eating something. Oh, and I just realised Patricia was there. Yeah. Hello, Patricia. How, how long have you been on there? Hiya. Really? Uh, I'm so sorry. About you should have said hello. Minutes. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. While you were talking, I don't like to interrupt. You know that. Yeah, I went downstairs, see, I've just come back upstairs. And I suddenly thought, oh, Patricia's there. We're just about finishing now. I can't even say to you, I can't even say to Patricia right now. <coughs> and what's your thoughts? Right. Well, I suppose you listened to a bit of it. What's your thoughts to what some of Chris is saying then? Well, it was probably waffling the last 20 minutes. With... It's. This is um, one of the reasons why you, you just have to do the best you can under the circumstances. And I mean, I, I only got the last bit about education and stuff. So, you know, if you can teach your children better than the education system, then, then do it if you can. You know, free thinking. Clear the, critical clear thinkers the fear, as well. Uh, non compliant. Yeah, on a cushion that is. Can I just say the bit that you missed at the beginning, which we could just get Chris to explain one more time for anybody that doesn't get it. Just explain what you did, you know, more about when you you put it back to people and they're following it, and then all this math goes to space and then it doesn't. Just so Patricia can hear that bit. Oh right, the, oh. the sort of the storyline for my next video. All right, so I'll start off with showing a rotating disc that's moving along the track. So it'll have a point on the disc, and I'll say, well, that point is accelerating and decelerating as it moves along the track. So this is well-known physics. We can't disagree with it. Uh, we've got to agree because the physics is all there. And they all agree that this point is accelerating up the track. Right. So then I'll put the, the dish on the train. And I'll say, well, now that train is moving at the same speed it was before and rotating the same as anything changed. No, the physics is exactly the same. It's still accelerating, but it's in the train. Then I'll put the rotation in a box on the train. And again, I'll say, has anything changed? Is the, is the point still accelerating up and down the track as it's moving across? So they've agreed all the way along. Then I'll say, I'll get this train and the box and the rotation and put it into space. So now this direct train is moving at the same speed as it was before through space and the rotation is the same. Is the point still accelerating and decelerating? And they'll start scratching their heads because this is the bit where it's like, Ugh. And then you say, I'll take the train and box away and the rotation is moving through space. Has anything changed? Is it still accelerating and decelerating? And that'll just totally do the fruit in because they've agreed all the way along that the physics says it's accelerating and decelerating until they get to a rotation moving through space. Now this isn't this this will just go anyone who's denying this is happening will have to go, what the hell? <coughs> so then you can argue the point how much acceleration is going on and how that works. So I'm doing that with quite a few people. Uh, and we've got massive varying uh, thoughts on what should happen, what is happening. But the fact that they're accepting that this acceleration is happening, which they've never ever done before, is a massive thing for me. You know, they're talking about this acceleration that, that, that not, was never supposed to happen. So 
that's why I think things are changing. So I'm just making things rip it like a trap up the degree all the way up and they get to a point where they can't really disagree but they want to disagree and then you push it one step further and it just goes shit or they just switch it off and go i'm not looking which a lot of them do do so that's the idea of that one yeah does that make sense yes it does to me patricia <laughs> she's gone oh, she's there now yeah, yeah. sorry uh, I have got, I've got another one, another one that uh, I was hoping to do with, I've not mentioned it to Harry yet, but I'm hoping to do with Harry, uh, get to university, some physics students. So if I, if I stand there with a ball, with a bit of chewing gum stuck on the side, right, and if, if I throw that ball at 10 mile an hour without revolving it, how fast is that chewing gum doing? And they'll go, 10 mile an hour. So we'll have it rotate that ball and throw it. Is that chewing gum still doing 10 mile an hour? So no, it's accelerating, decelerating. Then I'll go, right, we're on the equator and I'll stick this tuning drum on the ground, right? Now we're doing a thousand mile that way, six to 7,000 mile that way, how fast is that tuning drum, tune ball doing? Yeah. And then I'll go, at night, it's the other way around. And they'll just, they'll, they'll get them thinking. They'll agree to one point and then they'll have to agree to the second point. Then they'll argue about relativity and everything. So well, what about this? Blah, 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 you've just agreed. So it's a talking point. So hopefully that can get filmed with Harry, probably in the summer. So. I just want to ask, Patricia, Patricia was saying, so what were you going to say, Patricia? Oh, I was just going to say, um, I've never been one for them sort of things. So, you know, it just goes over my head, sorry. I'm just a bit thick. I just look at things a lot simpler. And I know that's that's simple to people that have got that knowledge, but I don't have that knowledge. Well, oh, that's, yeah, like, that, yeah, that's that. You know I mean, that, yeah, you're not thick. You just haven't have got the knowledge. It's not you know that, to access. So you've never been taught it. It wasn't so, about learning the mathematics of it all, Patricia. It's just understanding that they're agreeing to things which don't work the same in space. And then when they get to space, and they go ah, and they don't know how to answer it now because they've just been fooled by Chris. <laughs> well, they've not been fooled. Yeah. It's just been no, only fooled in, into into realizing that they're they they what they believe isn't right. Correct. Absolutely. It doesn't work. No. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So so it's it's a clever storyline. You can take it down. I have used it on quite a few sites on chats, uh, and don't step step it through, and they always get stumped. There's no, the, the 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 chat backs end and it you know goes very quiet. So it works. Yeah, we do it a bit differently. We like talking to the people who are awake and you like waking the people up. And that doesn't mean I don't flat smack on the telephone, but I'll do it on the phone because then I can just put the phone down to them. But uh, people have said people said, I'm really pleased that you told me that. And some people are really shocked and other people just okay then, so you know, when are you gonna do this or whatever, or when do you want the direct demo? You know, they just I do it on the <laughs> <laughs> on the phone. Oh, I don't really like it, but then you think, oh, this is an opportunity. This is someone like, do you know, when I'm really annoyed with something, like, I don't like the way you, not them personally, but the business treated me. And then I'll, and I'll suddenly go, do you realize it's more than this? It's about other things as well. And then I launch into it. <laughs> uh, well, I've always found that if you're in a queue or something and you get, say, you get chatted to somebody, you just say, have you looked into that flat earth thing? And they go, oh, yeah, I've heard about it. And I'll say, well, listen, you want to look into it? I have, and there's, a, there's something to it. And they just leave it at that, you know, and hopefully they go away and look, just just tickle their brain cells a little bit and see if they go off and look for themselves. Uh, that's that's what I do to a lot of people, is just, you know, give it a little tickle, a bit of curiosity speaks, and they're off. That's it. All, that's all it takes. It's a bit yeah, because you can't, you can't tell anyone. I mean, sometimes I do hang on, and they're going, right, should we get back? And they go, well, you haven't, this, there's one more thing. <laughs> but, I mean, you can't make anybody, so that's a good, that's a good way of doing it. But I'm, I prefer the awake people myself, so I don't have to worry about well, they're upsetting easy. anybody. Uh, well, there's a way to do it. I, well, I go to the bar to get the drinks in for me and the wife, uh, and I'll chat to somebody and mention it, and then go away. And the next time I go from next round, they'll come over and say, "What about this?" So it can, it can be quite strange. So the wife gets annoyed because I can disappear for twenty minutes getting a beer in. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, we we've gone now over the hour. It's been really great chatting with you. I think you made your point, and this is what you're doing, and you're letting us know that you're still a 
a warrior for us all. Oh, and um, thanks so much for what you do, Chris, because, you know, people like you get forgotten. Uh, well, I'm not, I don't want to be famous, so. <laughs> well, I know, but you're like the part of the backbone of things. And very quickly, how's Harry? Harry's fine. He's getting his life sorted out. He's enjoying life fully. Uh, I spoke to him about a week ago. Uh, I'm going up to see him in a few months because the wife's doing the Edinburgh Marathon, so uh, I'll meet up with Harry. Oh, when you do, give him a big hug from me. I will do. I'll speak to him quite well, often. I'll probably speak to him before then anyway, myself. But not that I speak to him too often. But, yeah, he doesn't. He, he likes to do his own thing now, doesn't he, for sure? I, th I think, well, since he's, he's sort of... Uh, fully retired, he sort of he sat back and he's, he's realising what he really wants to do. Uh, so, no, he's not stopped the Flat Earth stuff. That'll be back, I think, with a vengeance come the summer. But I think, I think he's just enjoying what he's got at the moment. So, which yeah. is, and Tara is as well. The dog. <laughs> yeah, you mustn't forget her. She's a big part of it. Um, yeah. Chris, thank you so much for coming on this Hangout. Patricia, even if you're late, I love you. But anyway, Patricia, do you want to do your bit then? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, I fell asleep. Um, I'm absolutely I'm not very well today, to be honest, but I'm, I'm all right. Could be worse. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, sorry I missed most of it, but yeah. I always love, I always love people that are just down to earth. Yeah. You know, and and all I can say is I love you. Thank you very and much. I love, sorry. I love Karen yeah. and I love everyone else. So take care. You too. Hey, yeah. Patricia, I love you. I love Chris and I love our chat room. Chris, you love everybody. Chris <laughs> your turn. Yes, I love everybody. Yes, the wife most. Uh, and thank you for having me, Karen. It's an absolute pleasure. But don't go. We'll say goodbye when I press the button. But for this hangout, thank you so much and hope everybody's enjoyed. Mwah.